Okay, so I'm reading Mark 5, 21 to 43. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by a boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jonas by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years, and she had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him, came behind him in the crowd, and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say you touch me? And he looked around to see her, to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. And while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult of those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. They ridiculed him, but when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by hand and said to her, Talitha, Kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the little girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. And when they were overcome with great amazement, but he commanded them strictly that no one should know it, and said to them, something that should, um, uh, to know it, and said something should be given her to eat. Praise God. No, that was great. Wasn't she great? Thank you, Tony. That was awesome. No, thank you so much. Um, I'll put me specs on and I'll be all right. Look, I, I love this message and I, I get excited. Every time we've been sharing that um, song and the DVD, it's, it's uh, you know, taken from excerpts of the, um, what is it, the, uh, the Chosen. I just love that and I, I get all emotional. I, have, I preached this message, the last time I spoke this message was in India in 2009 and I had an interpreter with me and it took me about two hours to deliver it. So are you ready? No, I'm not, it's not, I'm not gonna take two hours, okay? Uh, the poor things, they are all in grass huts and they nearly died of the heat. Um, but, but today I just wanna talk about two, these two special people in this story that received their healing. Now, um, these two special people, they were hearing and they were listening to the reports about Jesus, yeah? And what we listen to in this world is of the utmost importance, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Jairus had heard about Jesus. He was a Jewish official from the local synagogue who had heard about his reputation. Now there were other believing Jews at that time as well, and you can think of a car, I can think of two in the, in the Bible, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, and they become very acquainted with the Lord. Uh, they would go out of their way to go and learn of him. I think they probably had to do it privately and in secret because there was a lot of pressure. But you know, I've got the, I've got the word determined written down here. Now Jer Jarius, he came a long distance uh, to find the Lord. Um, they suggest that, or they, they say that Capernaum, where he was from, was about 20 odd k's from where Jesus was doing his thing. Now. I can see a very desperate, loving father. You can imagine, put yourself in his shoes, his little girl's dying, you know, and he's desperate. You know, I, I mean, I think of my granddaughters when I think of Jarrett, but 
you know, if I was in that situation, you know, I'd be feeling pretty beside myself. And then, and in verse 22 to 23, it says, he fell down at Jesus' feet and he begged him earnestly. That word begged, I think, in one of my previous messages, I, I changed that word for implored. I would talk about being implored. But in Matthew chapter 9, it also says that he worshipped him. So you get the idea of how desperate this guy was. Because he knew who he was. He was determined, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. He said, my daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so she might live. That's a powerful statement. So Jesus went with him and it says a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Can you imagine? If you ask Jesus to do something for you in faith, he will do it. Notice there was no praying to Jesus. And I'm not knocking prayer because there's a proper time and a place for prayer. I'm just trying to point out some of these examples of things so that you can see what these people did and they said and they got their healing. Yeah. <clears throat> and as they went on their way, imagine how excited and relieved Jairus would have been feeling. He would have gone, woohoo, I found the master. It's all good. It's all going to happen. You know. And on the way, they encounter the lady with the blood issue. In, in, in 25 to 34, we read. Now, this woman with the blood issue had already made up her mind. Let's take a look at this woman's story. She was determined also because she had heard about Jesus. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. And hearing by? Hearing. Amen. Faith statements. She spoke to herself because she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. There's another powerful faith statement. Jairus said, my daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and live. They had both already made up their minds in faith. Who knows Oral Roberts? Who's heard of Oral Roberts? I thought you might. Oral Roberts wrote a book, which I, I bought years ago. It's called, When You See the Invisible, You Can Do the Impossible. Yeah. It's a great read. It's only a small book, but it's worth getting your hands on. And we all know this one, or we should. And we're all faith people here. Proverbs 18, 21. Come on, Martin, spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Well done. Yes. Good job. Genesis 1, 27. Anyone know that one off the top? That'll be a bit of fun today. It tells us that we are made in the image of God. God spoke and he created everything in the beginning. When God created man, it says in most English translations, he created a living being or a human being. Now, one of the pastors that uh, uh, runs a big church in Rydal Mere, Gary Costello, pointed out to me and, uh, years ago that in the Hebrew translation of that, it's translated, and God created a speaking spirit. And I never knew that, only up until a few years ago. I never saw it that way. But it's common sense, isn't it, when you look at it, when you pull it apart. So God made people, and he also made dogs as well. Right? I want to just compare. Yes. Yes. Amen. He made dogs too. But what's the difference between a, a human or a speaking spirit or a human being and a dog? Come on, Kathy. Dogs could be nicer. Well, you just, just stole my thunder. I was, I was just about to sort of say the same thing, but dogs, they can be a lot nicer than people. And I was going to say that but they can't speak, but I think we, some of us might beg to differ. Yeah. They can almost like Kathy. I can see Kathy. Yeah. But <laughs> we, love our, we love our puppies, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, whatever you're living now, you've been speaking it. Yes. And I said to some of my students during the week, you show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Mm. So it's a sort of kind of similar thing, but yeah. speaking and living, it, it, it's really an happy thing. <clears throat> Proverbs 6 verse 2 says, we are snared by the words of our mouth. There's power in our tongue. The words that I speak, this is John 6, 63. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Proverbs 12, verse 18. The tongue of the wise promotes health. 
I can build you up and I can tear you down with my tone, with what I speak over your life. You know, a lot of the people that are involved in the alcohol, witchcraft, witches and warlocks, they know the power of faith. You know faith works for the devil too? It can. So we've got to be careful what we speak. Second Corinthians chapter 4, that's a powerful chapter. Verse 13, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. Are you in that state today? We also believe and therefore speak. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. I saw Indians, uh, Indian families with no money in India believing God for basic things like a refrigerator. And they would put the refrigerator up, up the picture of a refrigerator they'd cut out of a magazine, stick it on their uh, on the, on their fridge to remind themselves that they're praying and believing and speaking and crying out to God for that refrigerator. And God was always faithful and good. Yeah, right. um, the poor woman, <clears throat> back to the poor woman. The poor woman had spent all her money and had grown worse. She would have been suffering rejection. Can you imagine? from society, and she would have been breaking the Jewish law by being in public with her condition. It wasn't like today. We didn't have all the medical benefits that we had. We didn't have, we didn't, we didn't have the antibiotics. We didn't have the ultrasound machines, all the MRIs, all the gynecologists to go and help. Who knows, she may have even been bitter. I, I believe she would have been. She may have been bitter and angry at people and life in general, and probably even at God as well. Socially, she would have been at the bottom of society. But here is Jesus walking with a wealthy Jewish ruler who is at the top of society. Jesus doesn't care who you are. He has no favourites. None. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is someone here. <laughs> But the Bible says he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. Matthew 5, 20, uh, 45. It also says that God is no respecter of persons in Acts 10, 34. And in Acts 10, 38, I love this scripture. It says, how God anointed, anointed Jesus of Nazareth. I think Kathy, you read this out recently. With the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the who? The devil. That, that one? <laughs> it says the poor woman came up behind him and touched his garment. She had already made up her mind to receive her healing. She had an expectation that nothing could change the outcome. Do we have that expectation? Have we got the same, you know, like, it's almost like a Christian mongrel you've got to have. Yeah. yeah. She got her healing herself. God has already done his part by having his body broken and his blood poured out for you and I. You know, Isaiah 53, verses 3, three to 5, 1 Peter 2, 24. You've got it all happening in thousands of years before and in the future. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. God's love has no favoritism, it's got no division. God loves us equally, no matter what race or colour or age we are. And he loves us no matter what we have done. I want to really bang that home today. No matter what we've done or said. Let me say it again. God loves you no matter what you have done, whether you are a Christian here today or not. God loves you. You might be sitting there right now saying to yourself, yeah, but you don't know what I did last night or you don't know what I did a month ago or six months ago, right? But it doesn't matter anyway because you don't even know what the person sitting next to you's done as well. It doesn't matter. Repent is the answer, repentance. Repent. John 3.17, it says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. That's you and I. But to save the world through him. 
much more when we know him. Tell God you are genuinely sorry and turn away from what you are doing. We have a choice. Today I challenge you to take steps by faith and take actions towards genuine repentance, if that's you. Ask God to change your heart and give you a right attitude. You know, everything has to do with our hearts. Sin is not the problem. Although it will have consequences if it's not repented from. But it is the attitude of your heart that needs to change. I'm not giving you a license to sin here today, by the way. <laughs> if you need healing today, seek the healer. If you need finances today, seek the one that supplies all our riches in. Amen. Yeah. All our riches, all our riches in Christ Jesus, in his unlimited, glorious ways. I just put my own twist on that scripture there. It actually says, if you need finances today, Seek the one who supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. We cannot have right standing with God unless you have it through the blood of Jesus, through that cross. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He that knew no sin became sin, that we might become his righteousness. But we get a choice to make, don't we? He didn't make us robots. Imagine if he made us all robots. Oh, yeah. It'd be like, you know, just program us in the way we go and, you know, you can serve me, whatever. No, God gave us a free will. I've got here plan B. The lady had tried everything until she had, had heard about Jesus. If you doubt and have unbelief, you will receive what? Zilch. Yeah. And there are things that will make matters worse, okay? Disappointment, offences, bitterness, unforgiveness and rejection. It's a slippery slope, a slow fade. There's a powerful song, Who's Heard of Casting Crowns? Anyone? I love, it. I love that band. And they, whoop, they wrote a song called Slow Fade. It's a slow fade. <laughs> we, have <to> know, <laughs> we have to know that Jesus is who he says he is. And sometimes it's good just to hit the rewind button and remember what Jesus has done for us in the past if we're going through anything like this. But we also need to be careful what we say when things don't go the way we think they should go. Okay, we've got to be careful. Hebrews 3 verse 1 says that Jesus is our high priest of our confession. That's like, you know, when you look at what that means, it's pretty... It's pretty important for us to know that, that he is the high priest of our confession. So how and when these people got healed was determined by them, not God. God has already done what he needs to do. What did, I'll give you another example. What did blind Bartimaeus say? Who can remember? Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, oh, master that I might receive my sight. Amen. Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. God is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He is interceding for you. Don't act out on your feelings, but act on faith. There's a difference. Jairus got Jesus to come. The woman with the blood is you stopped Jesus in the crowd. He felt the virtue go right out of him. Blind Bartimaeus cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And they, all, all the people in the crowd told him to shut up. Like, shut up! Shut up! But he cried out louder, didn't he? How desperate are you for your healing? How desperate are you for your breakthrough today? The centurion said in Matthew chapter 8, Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. The power to heal is always available. It's not just in the morning or in the night time or at lunch time. Luke 6, 12 says the whole multitude sought to touch him for power went out from him and healed them. What, all or just a little bit? It says all, healed them all. 
Once they had spoken their faith, they closed their mouth and just believed and trusted in Jesus. And that's something that we we can learn, I think. I know Sandra, you're going through you're going through something right now. Once they had spoken their faith, they closed their mouth and just believed and trusted in Jesus. Hebrews 6 verse 12. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those through faith and patience. Inherit the promise. Yeah. Is this good? Yeah. Who are you who are you guys imitating? Anyone imitating anyone? Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's good to imitate people in faith, leaders in faith. Too. I think you, you need to pick people that are good mentors. I think. He, yeah, so, so church, we need to stay in, in a state of faith. I know it from experience because you can have some real highs and then you can have some real lows. But you're not to stay in the lows. You need to go up, back up to the head toward the highs in faith. I've got a little message here. It's called "It's Not Dead." It's not dead. Verses 35 to 36. While he was still speaking to the woman. Can you imagine after she'd been healed and then all of a sudden, here's Jesus talking to you. What do you think he would have been speaking to her about? The Holy Spirit's put that little verse in there. I had a revelation on that years ago. Can you imagine? And I can also imagine Jairus sitting there impatient, you know, fidgeting his thumbs, thinking, oh, when is he going to hurry up? I've got, I've got to get going, you know. Can you imagine what it was like? But can you imagine the Lord unpacking this woman? Can you imagine all the emotional trauma that she would have been through? Sometimes, you know, we might not need a, we might need a physical healing, but sometimes we might need an emotional healing. All right? So there's a lot going on when we've been through a lot of stuff. Would you agree? Yeah. So, you know, we have that, that ministry here in this church. I thank God for Peter and Louise because that's where their heart is. And I know it's my wife's heart as well. And I, I'm sure there are others here that had a heart for that. Um, while he was still speaking to the woman, the servants came to tell Jairus his daughter had died. Imagine how he would have been feeling right there and then. Imagine what the temptation would have happened. I know when I have a disappointment, I want to just react. But you know what, Jesus, he didn't. He knew what Jairus was probably feeling right then. And he spoke. He spoke straight over the top of Jairus. Didn't even give him a chance to say anything. He said, Jairus, don't be afraid. Only believe. Oh, God, it's so good. Because Jesus knows that we are attacked by our emotions. And Satan uses thoughts of fear and failure. Or circumstances that don't look to us as impossible. The devil's, oh, he's great at throwing back your past in your face. Sometimes we win, but sometimes we blow it, yeah? But God is the God of the second chance, the third chance, the Amen. fourth chance, the fifth chance, Amen. the sixth chance, the Amen. seventh chance. Yeah. Do I keep going? Amen. I can keep going. Do you know that God wants to deliver you from all your destructions? It says that in the Psalms. I think it's Psalm 107, verse 20. Verse 37. Take control of your situation. We need to keep going in faith. I'll say it again. We need to we need to hang around with people of faith as well. Mm -hmm. It's very important who we hang around with when we're going through something. You need to prioritise time with people who are in faith. Jesus only took Peter, James and John along to the house of Jairus. He entered the home and he took control of the situation by faith. He removed all the crying, the whining, all the, woo, you can imagine it, all the mockers. There are people there going, she's dead. Like you can imagine, all the religious people going, you know, she's gone. You know, I can see it. He then commanded the girl back to life, didn't he? He took her by the hand and spoke, in her, spoke life into her. You know, and as we come to this time, at the end of this message, may I leave you with these words of Jesus. We're going to have a time of ministry after this. 
But I wanted to talk to you the last few things. Speak to the mountain. If there's a mountain in your life, Mark chapter 11. We all love this. I love this verse. Mark 11, 23 to 24. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. There it is. Is it easy to do? No. Maybe not. But there it is. It's, it's what the Lord's told us. And I'll leave you with this last one. John 11, verse 40. And this will be my next message when I, if I ever get the opportunity to speak again. I hope I do. But this will be my next message to you guys. This is when Lazarus was raised from the dead. Jesus responded to them all. He said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? There's a lot in there. So Father God, I just praise you and thank you. Lord, I pray that not one word that we've spoken today will be missed today, Father. I pray that you will watch over every word in people's hearts and minds this morning, Lord, to do your will in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Amen. Bless you guys. So we're going to have a time of...